All right, hey everybody, 10 Tampa Bay Chief Meteorologist Bobby Deskins here. Quick update on the tropics for today. I try to make this really quick just because we've got time to be tracking this, right? We're talking this weekend, it's northeast of Puerto Rico. By the time we get back towards, it looks like Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, things are really going to be interesting because we're trying to make that turn, hopefully, at that time. So we got some time to look at it. Let's just go ahead and get close in on it right now. And you can see this thing's way out there, right? Uh, well, 900 miles from the Windward Islands, but about 2,000 miles, a little more than that, to Miami. So it's definitely way, way out there. But it's actually looking pretty good today. Winds this afternoon are up to 70 miles per hour. We're likely to get a hurricane here soon. And if you look real close here, you can see it actually looks like uh, convection's firing up pretty well here. Lots of outflow around the outside of the storm. Uh, there's just very little shear around it, at least shear that will shear it apart. So... It's in a very good environment. Water temperatures underneath it are very warm as well, too. In fact, look at these sea surface temperatures here. Uh, yeah, very warm. And in fact, if you look in this area that it's tracking, very warm temperatures in this area right in here, right? Once it starts to turn a little more to the north in this area, the water does cool just a little bit. Plus, it's going to be with some wind shear on at that point. But between where it is now and right here, boy, oh, boy, this thing looks like it could go. So... All right, here's the latest track from the Hurricane Center. And as of this morning, really, they started saying 150 mile per hour winds from Saturday morning all the way through Monday morning. All right, it still has not started the turn at this particular point here. So that's going to be interesting because what happens is these things slow down when they turn. If it slows down too much, the mechanism that's pulling it up up here could come and go. And then it would come further to the west-northwest. But if you look at the modeling, most of the modeling, in fact, before I do that, let me show you this. Most of the modeling is in really good agreement with some kind of turn. I mean, yeah, there's something there, but you're seeing it all try to say, hey, it at least starts to turn to the north just a little bit. Uh, now let's take a look. This is the European forecast model. I don't want to do that. No, I'm going to turn this off. Uh, bottom line, the, the European forecast model is still coming up in between Bermuda and the Carolinas, which is you know, really good news. If you're going to get it, you want it to come up to the north. This goes out through, let's go out through about Saturday night, Sunday morning. There it is near the northeastern islands. Uh, center and the worst weather should stay offshore, but the, the latest track's a little bit closer there, so something you want to keep an eye on. That's, again, Saturday night, Sunday. This is Tuesday. Now, Tuesday is going to start this slowing down and, kind of looking towards a turn to the north and the west it's still getting stronger wednesday thursday friday it's kind of getting on its horse and moving to the north this is friday you can see bermuda would have to watch that more than anything else now this is the gfs forecast model look at that strengthening right there as we got into monday tuesday wednesday this is wednesday look at that headed toward bermuda the gfs has been on the right side of the track as far as bermuda is concerned closer to them than they are into the carolinas <laughs> Watch what the GFS does for Friday. Now, this is over a week. This is about a week and a half away. So things are going to change. But obviously, you're up there in Maine and Nova Scotia and those areas. You want to keep a really close eye on this one. Uh, okay. Now, there, there, as I mentioned, there is some shear. There's going to be some shear on this thing. And I've kind of drawn it out now as far as the track goes. And you can see what's happening is th all this wind shear that you see over the southeast U.S., over south Florida as well. That eventually is going to start pushing on this thing a little bit. And so right now, this is kind of tough to see. You see all these little circles right in here? See all those? That's, okay, the Hurricane Center has a forecast out to here. Beyond day five, it, the model, the European saying it's moving up in this direction. But look at all of this shear. This would really help to protect Florida, number one, and even the Carolinas. Uh, so if anything, even when it gets in this range, let me go ahead and play it out a little bit further. It's going to at least, I mean, if the center's here and it's got the shear right here, uh, it depends on how this plays out, but it's at least going to blow the tops of this way off to the north. And so it won't be the best structure potentially. This latest frame is Thursday, and this shows the center over here and most of the, the shear over here. So it's not going to just blow this thing apart. That's not going to happen. But we're going to have to see what effects it has on it as far as strengthening goes. All right, let's come back over here. I'm going to show you the forecast models. Let me make this a little bit easier for you to see. Let's try this. This works a little bit better for you. There you go. You can see that a little bit better. 
these are the intensity forecast models. Look at that. So many of them up here in the Cat 3, Cat 4, a couple trying to get up in the Cat 5. And these halves you see here, these are pretty decent forecast models. But again, they're on the top range. So we've got plenty of time to watch that. This is a look at the European ensembles. And you can see Bermuda's right in here. So they're pretty close to that as well. GFS, I mean, the bottom line, what you need to know is look at all these and how they all turn to the north and then the northeast, right? And by the way, keeping it offshore, off of Maine at least, right? Here are the global models, and you can see they're just now in the time frame where they're starting to get that little turn out there. So that, that's where we're at with it right now. Um, I don't think anything changing right now. We really have a couple more days to be looking at this before we start to see changes. I think the important part, number one, is just going to be the swell that gets going as we get going into the latter half of this weekend. And then almost all of next week, all up and down the East Coast, we're talking, uh, the kids are back in school now, right, post-Labor Day. But we're talking all kinds of uh, storm, not storm surge. Well, there'll be some higher tides. But we're talking high surf and rip currents from South Florida all the way up to Maine, eventually, if this thing takes the track. And that also includes places like Punta Cana, right, and Puerto Rico. I mean, Rincon's going to love it, Northwest Puerto Rico. But you'll be getting some swell from this as well, too. I'll keep you updated. I'll try and keep these short next couple of days. Really, the timing is going to be what happens and what the models are thinking, especially by Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, because then they'll start really feeling that turn and, and the speed and, and the troughs that are coming in from the north. There's a big trough that's opening up in a cold front. Hopefully, that'll kind of split those high pressures, and we'll start to see it come up to the north. I'll be talking about that, but until then, have a good one.